A couple weeks ago, I published a YouTube video on our channel here called Motion Magic in Under 60 Minutes. In it, I showed you how you can use motion to create some really useful tools for Final Cut Pro, even if you don't know anything whatsoever about motion. If you haven't seen it, I really recommend you check it out. There's a link in the description below. Now, if that video isn't enough to convince you that motion belongs in your toolbox as a Final Cut Pro editor, here's one more. If you like this, please click the like button and click subscribe. The Ken Burns effect in Final Cut Pro is great, but it's limited because it only works on the full duration of a clip. For instance, here I'm in a 1080p project and I have a high resolution still. In fact, if we go to the info inspector, you can see the size. So we know we have some resolution to work with. So if I go to the crop tool with either shift C or you can select it in this drop down menu here and then select Ken Burns, I can switch this. So I've got a start here and an end here and I'll adjust the end and click done. And now over the course of this clip, we have this slow push in, but it lasts the whole clip. Now we've done a couple videos that show you how to get around this. For instance, if I blade this clip in the middle with command B, and then I select the second clip, go back to the Ken Burns effect and reverse it and click done. Now we push in over this half and then we pull out over the next half and it's nice and smooth. And in fact, if we go to this beginning of this clip and press Option F for a freeze frame, Command minus to zoom out a little bit, now we have a move in that then holds. And then we have a move out. And in fact, you could take that move out and go back to the Ken Burns effect. And you want to leave the start where it is, but we could change the end to perhaps a different framing. Click Done. And now we push into this guy, we hold on him, and then we pan over to these two people. And what's nice about this is because this is a freeze frame, you can adjust how long that hold is. You can adjust when it occurs. It could occur a little sooner. It could go a little longer, a little shorter. So you have great flexibility when working with a still. So that's a great workaround. It's a little more tricky when it comes to video. So here are the video clip. And by the way, both of these, uh, the still and the video are from pexels.com, which is a place you can download free content. And this video clip, we pan across this uh, car moving, moving across the road here. And this is a 4K clip in a 1080p timeline. So we know we can zoom in 200%. So once again, Shift C, Ken Burns, this time I'll move towards the end because the car moves and I want to kind of frame it towards the end and I'll zoom in again, move towards the end about like that. Let's reverse that. So we end there. And now as we scrub through the clip, we push in tight to the car, but we have the same problem where it occurs over the entire clip. What if you just wanted to pan into here and freeze? Well, again, you could command B to blade the clip. You could take the second half of it and go back into Ken Burns and reverse it, and now we pan in, let's click done, we pan in, and then we pan out, but you can't create a freeze frame here because it's video. But what you can do is play the clip again, command B right there, and then on this middle portion, if we go back into Ken Burns, we can take this end framing and kind of force it to match the starting framing and what happens then is we push in and then when we hit this middle section, we'll freeze on it and then we can pull out from there. So you can work around this limitation of Ken Burns by blading the clip, but it's a fair amount of work to do so. So you might say, hey, wait a minute, I'm going to undo all that command Z a few times. So we get back to our single clip without any Ken Burns on it, just to make sure I'll go back to the video inspector and uh, reset for Ken Burns. Uh, you might think, well, okay, but I could use keyframes. And you can, but there's a limitation there. So let's move to this point in time and set a position keyframe and a scale keyframe. Move forward a little more, and then we'll uh, scale up. And by the way, you could also do this by going to the transform tool. We'll do the same thing. I'll just move over here and scale up a little more. And we do now have a move over the middle of the clip. In fact, if I press Control-V, 
to reveal the animation, we can see those keyframes. Uh, but there's a problem. Notice if I move these close together, what happens? Now, could you see how the move was kind of funny? A little bit of shift in it. And the reason for that is if we go to the position keyframes and I right click, you can see they can be made linear or smooth. And they're smooth by default, which is what we want because we want a nice ease before position. But if I go to the scale keyframes and I right click, uh, you can't ease scale. And that's the problem with keyframing in Final Cut Pro. So, how can we get the best of both worlds? where you can pan and zoom in on a clip without needing to blade it anywhere you want. Once again, motion to the rescue. So I've launched motion. I'm gonna create a new Final Cut effect. These settings really don't matter at all. I'm gonna click open. With the effect source selected, I'll go to the inspector, to the properties tab, and I'm gonna publish the position parameter. That's it. We're all ready. I'll just show you in the project itself. If we select the project under Publish Parameters, we have Position, which include X, Y, and Z. Let's save it. Command S. I'll call it Next Level Ken Burns. I'll save it in this Motion Magic category and Publish. And let's go back to Final Cut. To the Effects Browser. To my Motion Magic category and I'll add it to this clip. Let's say I want to zoom in starting right here. I'll set a keyframe for position. I'll move further along. Then I'm going to open up position. And because I now have position Z, I can zoom in using position Z. And the cool thing about that, as you'll see, is all three of these keyframes will ease. So now if I play through that, we push in and we get a nice smooth push in with the eases for X, Y, and Z, and then it stops. Control V in order to reveal these keyframes, and I can easily reposition them. And if I move them close together, just to show you how that move looks when it's very fast, we now have a nice smooth move, which we couldn't do when keyframing position and scale with the built-in Final Cut parameters. So once again, without knowing anything about motion, just publishing a single parameter, we've created a really useful effect for Final Cut Pro. Now, some of you may be thinking, Mark, why didn't you use a motion title when you published from motion? Because a title can be placed on top of clips. You can see it so you know there's some effect going on there. You can apply it to multiple clips, etc. Here's why. Over here, I have the same clip and I've blown it way, way, way up with two different versions. Here is the next level Ken Burns effect we just made placed directly on the video clip like I showed you. And here I've created as a title. And the reason I blew it way up is I wanted to show you the difference. So if I move the playhead right here, the first frame of this clip, you can see we've blown it up by looking at the parameters here. And if I back up one frame, here's where we did it with the title. Notice how it looks softer with the title. And it looks better here as an effect. So the takeaway here is when you increase the scale of a video clip by using a motion title project, you lose resolution. It's basically baked in at the project resolution, which in this case is 1080p, even though it's a 4K clip. So we're kind of locked into that 1080p resolution. But when we do it as an effect, here, we have access to the full resolution of the clip. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you haven't checked out the full 60 minute video and you like this one, definitely check that out for some other very cool tips. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.